Well, hey everybody. Rashawn, Tommy, and I were making a trip to Bass Pro to pick up some snakehead gear, and we thought, you know, why don't we show you some of the basics of snakehead fishing gear that you might want to pick up, and we'll give you our recommendations too. So, with that being said, we'll get straight to this video, see us walking through Bass Pro, picking up different pieces of snakehead gear, and telling you exactly which ones we prefer and why. <laughs> Let's get to the video. I can't believe you let us down this way, Rashawn. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, sir. What you got there, Frogmaster? Bass Pro XBS Poppin' Kirby. I've used them, man, and I've called on them. It, it reminds me of Spro. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I wonder if Spro makes them. For I still have some Poppin' Kirby's right now. This is another one that works pretty good. I've never used it. I see other people catch it. I don't know about paying $11 for it. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy did a pretty good review on it. I think the only downside was the fragility of it. There Probably we go. The cheapest frog on the market. You can get it at Walmart, too. I say, Butch loves them, man. Yeah, I got I, I, I gotta try the scum frog, dude. You're not one that you can cast farther. I haven't tried them in years, literally. The launch series. Do they have any poppin' versions, man? Uh, I'm, I'm in the market for a yes. poppin' frog right now. But it's not here. Okay. They have this popular one, but they have one that looks like these, which is on top of what I was. It was that one you had small? This yeah, it's small in there. $11? It's really small. No way. Well, I'm not saying $11. Nah. Good. good God, the prices on these frogs are really high, man. Yep. Oh, what you got there, Rashawn? A mega bass part show. Yeah, darn right it is. That's got it. That's one of my favorite swim baits, I swear to God, man. Imagine this in Alaska tank. Yo, I always just want to walk by the Mega Bass area and just knock those into my freaking cart, man. Ah, oh, these pearl colors too. Oh, oh man. Yup, those itty bitties. Oh, itty bitties with a, a small waist swim bait hook and you just throwing it over and then dragging it across. It's like those itty bitties, man. When I was camping down to Virginia for smallmouth, oof. I mean, I know they catch snakes too, but I'm saying for smallies, man, they are deadly. I didn't know they had these. I haven't used those yet, man. So if any of you folks out there have tried these, these are what, Mega Bass Custom Worm? I'm really intrigued by these because this is a great body profile for imitating snakehead fry. And both bass and snakehead will eat snakehead fry. But it's a great imitation for minnows in general. If any of y'all tried that, man, let me know how it worked out for you. <laughs> whooping stick. Whooping stick? It's like some country <laughs> 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 Now, if y'all are curious about the kind of hooks I usually use for my swim baits, I'll use the Berkley Fusion or the Gamagatsu. The key is just going to be going ahead and matching the hook size to the lure size, and then deciding if you want the weighted swim bait hook or the unweighted. You'll find pretty much a selection of everything you need here, but matching it to lure is going to be the key. Match up those sizes. What do you use for all the I generally won't use leader, not for snakehead, but for the other species, I, the Berkeley Vanish is a pretty sweet deal for yeah, their coral. That's more than a lot of leader, but I use them like yeah. 20, 30 pounds. Yeah, I usually use about 20 pound leader. That's not a bad one. All right, Rashawn, educate us. X5 versus X9, man. X9 is your casting distance. It's still strong, I use it. And the X5 is for your vegetation, and it's a stronger brazen resistance. This is smoother and it gives you long, longer casting. And this one right here, pretty much when you're in that slop, yep. yeah, it cuts right through. It's it thicker, but it's got more like more strands, nine strands, it's got five. That's the only thing I use. Yep. Now on a reel that Rashawn gave me, it has the Berkeley X9 on it. That line is smooth, very smooth. I definitely like the X9. When I go to spool up my reels again, I'm probably gonna to go to the X9, or maybe the X5 on at least one or two rods in case I wanna fish that really heavy cover. Now, for lots of species, the lip grippers are helpful, but especially for snakehead, you definitely need lip grippers, and you have a wide selection here at Bass Pro. And Rashawn, as you can see, has laid down the bump board that I use. Now, next year, the frame bill won't be good anymore, but for right now, that's the one I use, and I, I recommend it. You know, It's not the most durable out there, but I've had mine for a long time. As long as you don't abuse it, you're gonna be good to go. Just don't let the snakeheads abuse it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yup. Yup. They will crush it. Folks, if you want to see us do a challenge where yeah, we're only allowed to use rods like these. <laughs> Steve won't be like this. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all let us know in the comment section. So one other thing that we want to go over you with here is the net choice you use for snakehead. For snakehead nets, I think most of them them to be rubberized, very wide and very deep. Because when you are dealing with a 30 inch snakehead, you need all the help you can get with getting it to fit in there. Now look, oh, yeah, now look, that's a nice net. What's the price tag on that, Tommy? Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. That is, oh, buddy. That net is one of the biggest and deepest I've seen. And honestly, if you're really looking for that upper end of snakehead, that's a really great net to have. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing to us? What are you doing? There's a button on the bottom, dude. I think it might be it. No, on the, right there. Yep, underneath your hand. There you go. Oh. Yep. That's another really big, deep one, man. I'm digging their net selection, dude. Oh my God, you liked it. <laughs> like a challenge where you hold up the barbell. <laughs> the only model I would say steer away from, generally speaking, is gonna be the smaller models and the nylon models. I used to actually use nylon when I was snakehead fishing, and if you get them in there and the hooks get loose, when they thrash around, they will destroy those nets and perhaps become unhooked and get out of the net as well. Deep, rubberized, wide nets. Now, for my fellow early and late season snakehead fishermen who like to employ live bait at times, the other thing you might want is a bait bucket and an aerator to go with it. Over here, they sell aerators by themselves if you want to go that route. But they also have some models of Nuno buckets that have the actual aerator attached to it already. But keeping your baits lively is super important. You want that minnow to go in the water and be moving around everywhere to get that fish's attention. If you fish snakehead for any amount of time, you already know this, but if you haven't, snakehead are really tough on baits, man. <laughs> they will tear up some baits with their thrashing and their teeth and everything else. Z-Man with their Elastec, those are pretty much the most durable products on the market. Yep. Rashawn, Tommy, me, a lot of other guys we know, they will throw Z-Man all the time for snakehead. Be it, what do we have over here? We have the deep, the diesel minnow, what else do y'all throw with them? The flukes over here. Okay, the diesel minnow, the flukes, lots of different models to choose from. But when you're talking about toughness and durability on a lure, boy, I don't think you can beat it. So folks, hope you found this helpful right here. We're just gonna run you through our happy place and a few different lures and pieces of gear that we recommend out there, man. So hope you come out, check them out. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good one. In case y'all were wondering, if Rashawn has this pink rod, You've got the answer is yes. I do. <laughs> <laughs> if it's pink, Rashawn knows about it and probably owns it. <laughs>